Hi everybody, welcome to our next little lecture uh, in the area of DC direct current circuit analysis. Um, and today we're going to look at a specific type of circuit called a series circuit. Now, a circuit is considered to be a series circuit if the same current passes through all resistors that are connected in series. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, in a series circuit, what you have is a voltage source, as we see here, and you have more than one resistor, but these resistors are connected in a way that whatever current passes through, the same current passes through each resistor in series on its way back to the voltage source in order to, of course, conserve charge. Okay, so that's the first principle is that they, each resistor in series gets the same current. The second principle of a series circuit is that each resistor may drop different voltage. They may each use or need a different amount of energy in order to run. So the voltage drop may not, may not be the same on each resistor as it uses its energy along the way. Because remember, we've got to use up all that voltage. So whatever your voltage you have is divided up among those resistors. Now to understand what's going on in this series circuit, whenever we have a series circuit, one of the first things we're going to want to do is to reduce it to look like the simple circuit with a single voltage, a single current, and a single resistance we're going to call REQ. REQ is called the equivalent resistance. In other words, it's one resistor that would represent the same thing as if we had all three of the others, or however many of the others, in series. Now, the nice thing about the REQ for series, it's very easy to get. To get the REQ for any series circuit, just add together all the resistors. So, for example, down below here, I've got a circuit that has a 60 volt source, and it's hooked to a 10 ohm, 3 ohm, and 7 ohm resistance in series. Okay. Now, let's sort of understand what's going on in the circuit. First of all, like I said, I want to reduce this to this simple looking circuit, which still has 60 volts, because I can't change that voltage source. Now, the REQ here is pretty easy. All I've got to do is add 10 plus 3 plus 7, and that gives me 20 ohms. In other words, if I had a single 20 ohm resistor, I sort of get the same effect as if I had this series in general. And how do I know? Well, let's look. And let's apply Ohm's law. B equals IR. Well, if I have 60 volts attached to 20 ohms, that means I must have 3 amps of current. So this circuit would use 3 amps of current. It would have 3 amps of current running through it, okay, as it drops that 60 volts. And again, that 60 volts would all have to be dropped right here at this 20 ohm resistor. Now, here's the neat thing. This simple circuit represents this series group. Since it uses 3 amps, that means this circuit must also draw 3 amps. Now, watch this neat thing. Here we are again with Ohm's law. Well, that 3 amps leaves the voltage source and hits this 10 ohm resistor. Okay, well if V equals IR, and I is 3 and R is 10 at that location, that means there must be 30 volts dropped at this location. Now that 3 amps though keeps going, right? It's got to keep going, conservation of charge. It hits this 9 ohm resistor, well, 3 amps times 3 ohms, that would give me 9 volts drop there. Now think about the dropping. I started off with 60. I dropped 30. That means there's 30 left for the last two resistors. Now of that 30, I've now dropped 9. So that means by this point I must only have 21 volts left to drop, or left to use. Well, here comes my 3 amp current because it's still the same thing. Well, V equals IR. I is 3 and R is 7. That gives me 21 volts. 
and now I've dropped all 60 volts. So it all seems to work. Okay, we conserve charge because our 3 amps still made it back all the way here, but now all 60 volts have been dropped. And notice that the amount of voltage drop is proportional to the amount of resistance when you're talking about a series circuit. Because the current is the same, voltage and resistance are proportional to each other. So the higher the resistance, the more voltage it drops. Let's take a look at that in a simulation. Okay, here I have that same circuit. 60 volt source, 10 ohm, 3 ohm, and a 7 ohm resistor. Okay, let's close the circuit. Well, just like we calculated, we see there's 3 amps of current leaving the battery and 3 amps of current returning. So 3 amps must be flowing everywhere in this circuit. Now, let's look at the voltage drops. Okay, well, we put this probe here across the 10 ohm, and we see, oh, drop 30 volts right there. Okay. Now, interesting enough, if I move it just right here, notice it drops 39 volts, but that's counting these two resistors because this one, as we saw, drops 9 volts. Over here, well, that one drops our 21 volts, just like we calculate. So it's interesting, if you were to put it here and here, notice it drops all 60 volts between the first resistor and the last resistor. So it all works out. So let's take one more example. I've got a 40 volt source, and it's hooked to an 8 ohm, 5 ohm, and 7 ohm resistor. And I want to know what's the equivalent resistance of the circuit, the current flowing through the circuit, how much voltage drop each resistor uses, how much each one drops. That's why it says VDR. And then the last question I'm going to ask is about power. We'll get to that in a minute. So here's the steps. First, let's reduce this to a simple circuit. Where we have 40 volts. And our REQ would have to be 8 plus 5 plus 7 or 20 ohms. Okay, so REQ is 20 ohms. Answered my first question. Now apply Ohm's law, V equals IR, on the simple circuit, 40 volts and 20 ohms, gives a current of 2 amps. And there's the answer to my second question, 2 amps. Now here's the important step. This simple circuit is actually this circuit that we started with. So if there's 2 amps in this circuit, there is 2 amps in this circuit because they are the same circuit. Now I'm going to run my 2 amps around my circuit and apply Ohm's law, V equals IR. So the voltage drop here would be I, 2 amps, R is 8 ohms, or 16 volts. The voltage drop here would be I is 2 amps, 5 ohms, 10 volts. The voltage drop on the 7 ohm, I is still 2 amps, 7 ohms, 14 volts. And so the way I like to write this would be V on the 8 ohm is 16 volts, V on the 5 ohm is 10 volts, V on the 7 ohm is 14 volts. So that answers all my voltage drop questions. Now there's a quick check. If I add up 16 plus 10 plus 14, I get 40 volts. So I must have done things right because I've dropped all 40 volts. Now my last question. The last question is about power. How much power, for example, does the circuit use itself? Well, if I'm talking about the whole circuit, I can use P equals IV. But I'm going to use the simple circuit because it is the total circuit. So the total current is 2 amps and the total voltage is 40. That gives me 80 watts of power used for the whole circuit. But what if I just wanted to know the power the 5 ohm resistor uses? Well, the current on the 5 ohm resistor is 2 amps. But it drops 10 volts. So of that 80 watts of power, the 5 ohm resistor only uses 20 watts. So that's how you can pick out an individual resistor. And that's basically all there is to a series circuit. Okay. First of all, a series circuit is one where the same current flows through each resistor in series, although they will 
get the same current, they can drop different voltages depending on their resistance. To find the equivalent resistance to get a simple circuit, we simply add all those resistors together. And then to find current and voltage drops, we simply apply Ohm's law, V equals IR. That's it for this lesson. See you next time.